Hello everybody and welcome back. Now some of you might have noticed that I wasn't super active the past couple of days on YouTube and that's because I was actually attending a hackathon. Now what I'm going to be doing in this video is discussing what I built at the hackathon, why it was such an awesome event and kind of walking you guys through the story of how we ended up getting to where we went. Now if you haven't heard of a hackathon I'm going to briefly introduce you to what kind of the concept and idea is but I would definitely highly recommend that any of you if you have the opportunity to go do attend one as it is a really cool experience. So the hackathon that I went to is actually in Montreal at Concordia University. Now this was a really awesome event, it was massive, there was about 700 or 800 people actually there, which broke down into about close to 150 teams of 4 people. Now essentially what a hackathon is, is a 24 hour or 36 or some duration long event where you just build a hack. Now a hack could be something hardware related, it could be something software related, but they all follow a kind of theme. Now for this event I believe there was something around 25 different sponsors and there was about 12 different sponsored challenges. Now what these challenges are, are large sponsors like we had sponsors like TD and Sun Life and a bunch of other massive tech companies like CGI and I'll name a few other ones later that will pick some something that they want you to build. So they'll say hey use our TD insurance API and build an app that you know does this with it or does that with it. So you can decide to compete in these different challenges and then if you win you'll get different prizes. So I think one of the better prizes I noticed was an Oculus Rift and that was given to every single person of the winning team and I believe that was from I don't actually know the company that sponsored it, but it was like an augmented reality challenge where you had to build some AR game or some augmented reality application. So there's a lot of cool stuff there. I know at ours they had like a Unity game development one, which was really interesting. And the project we actually decided to build was something to do with called the Octave Music API. Now you probably haven't heard of this company as I haven't, but their challenge was build something with our music API. So that's what we decided to do. So anyways, that's enough about what a hackathon is and kind of how they work. Now let's talk about my adventure to and from this hackathon and how we built the application that we did. All right, so I'm just going to kind of walk you guys through the itinerary for this hackathon, what happened through it, a little bit of story of how we built our application. So I'm going to start from actually midnight the day before the hackathon. So this would have been, I guess, Friday night. So since our bus actually left to go to Montreal at 3.30 in the morning, we kind of decided that we weren't going to go to bed the night before. We were going to sleep the entire day and then we were going to stay up until the bus. So maybe from like 9 p.m. until when the bus arrived um, and that would be fine. So that's what we decided to do. Maybe a bit of a mistake. But anyways, we went to one of our uh, the guys on the team's house and we stayed there and just kind of got to know each other a bit better because some of us hadn't worked together before. Like I didn't know two of the teammates that were on our team. And we looked at all of the sponsored um, prizes and all of the different companies that were going to be there. So this is where we actually decided our idea, which was going to be to build this music player. We had a whole bunch of features we wanted to add to it that we didn't get, end up getting with. Our first initial concept was we wanted to use ML to detect your face and figure out what emotion you were. And then based on that emotion, so I guess mood, vibe, whatever you want to call it, uh, we would serve different music to you. This didn't end up working, I'll talk about that later, but now I'm just going to be looking at this itinerary and just kind of walking you through the hours of the hackathon and what happened. So our bus left at 3.30, 4 in the morning, we got to Montreal around 6, there was breakfast at 7 a.m., and between 6.30 and 7 was where we got to find our workspace. Now this was like vitally important, uh, which we didn't really realize was finding a good workspace. So there's a massive building, it's about 12 stories tall, that just had a ton of rooms in it that were kind of like boardroom, study room kind of things. So we had to find one of those. Uh, literally every room was taken when we got there. We got lucky and we actually had the security guard open up a different room on one of the higher floors for us. So I'll show you a photo. We ended up getting a decent room. And then between that time and 9.30 a.m. was kind of a time to continue planning and think about what idea we wanted. Now 9.30 a.m. was the opening ceremonies. I'll show some clips of it here. And there essentially all the sponsors came out. They announced, you know, what their challenges were and why they were you know, sponsoring the event. And that was pretty cool. I got to hear about a lot of the cool stuff that some Canadian companies were doing. Um, to list some sponsors, I'm just gonna go to the back of the book here because I can't remember some of them. There was um, HP, Unity, Telus, SAP, Zendesk, Sun Life, Octave Group, Shutterstock, CGI, and you know, there's a ton more. There's like Linode, TD, um, Ubisoft, Matrox. There was, I think there was like 30 sponsors or something for this event. So after 9.30, um, at 10.45, the hacking period started. Now this was 24 hour hacking, so literally between that time and 10.45 a.m. the next day is when you had time to build your projects. So we got started right away and you know built a ton of different stuff. Now in between there, I believe there was lunch 
at 12 there was a career fair they had that i didn't end up going to that was in the main kind of lobby where they had all of the sponsored booths and you had an opportunity to go talk to the sponsors network you could give your resumes if you wanted to um, and they actually gave us these badges which i'm holding right here that have a qr code on them that represent um like this QR code is pretty much everything about you. So when you applied to the event, you gave in your resume and all this information. So any of the sponsors, if they wanted your info, they could just scan this QR and I'm just wearing it so you guys, so I remembered to talk about it and they'd get all that info, which was pretty cool. This was also how we got lunch. We just scanned that um, and all of the meals that they provided for free at the event. So lunch was at 12. Uh, there was a midnight snack at 6.45, or not midnight snack, sorry, supper at 6.45, and then midnight snack, obviously, at midnight, and then hacking ended 10.45 a.m. the next day. So I'll kind of walk you through our sequence of events while hacking. So once hacking started, we got a really good start um, for the first like two, three hours. Everyone was just kind of learning all the modules. We knew exactly what we were gonna do. And then at kind of the three hour mark, I had been trying to train this ML model to do your emotion recognition. It was like kind of working, but it just was a huge headache and it was gonna take way longer. And I knew I wouldn't have enough time to implement it. So we scrapped that. And then I started working on the music API. Now the guys, the other guys on our team were just like learning front end development and learning all the stuff they needed to do to make the website, which I'm gonna show you guys later. So the company's API that we used was called Octave Group and they do like all kinds of music delivery systems and stuff for companies and they have like Apple Music for business. They're like partners with that. So they had this API that they wrote custom for this event. Unfortunately, this was the worst API I've ever worked with and it resulted in me taking about seven hours to actually get it fully functioning. And part of those seven hours was me going down to the sponsored booth and sitting beside the guy who wrote the API who was actually there and I was texting with him on this little chat app like for like three hours before that. So I went down, sat with him, we debugged this API, and eventually after like two hours of doing that, we got it working. While I was sitting down there, I'll say about five or six groups actually came up and had the same issue as, as us. Uh, so anyways, that was fun. So after that, we got the music part working. We were already kind of behind because I figured I would have done that quicker. And then I just started working on more backend, more backend, more backend. And you know, I can't really walk you guys through everything that was happening, but essentially I'll say that once we got to the 12 hour mark of hacking, all of us had been up for at least, I want to say, 30 hours so we were pretty exhausted and it was starting to get a lot sloppier when it came to coding like at the beginning everything was beautiful our git commits were wonderful and then you know all you guys can see the repository i'll put in the description things just kind of went to crap um, and yeah so that was interesting so anyways we stopped hacking at 10 45 a.m we had a functioning application with a few things kind of broken but as we expected and then it was time for project demos so project demos are essentially you bring all your stuff downstairs you set up your laptop and you just demo what you made now this was really cool because I got to see what everyone else was working on. And I will say there was some groups that made some mind boggling, just amazing things. Some ones off the top of my head were like a sign language detector. These guys made an augmented reality, like clash of clans kind of like game. Um, there was one for like parking assistance. There was just all these different apps. I'm not going to run you guys through all of them, but really cool to see what people were able to come up with. And some of these things looking at them like could have been full on businesses, like what they made in 24 hours, which makes me question if they really did it um, at during the hackathon or if they did it beforehand, but regardless, really cool. So after that, um, we had the closing ceremony. So that demo was actually also known as the judging period where judges would go around and rank your kind of stuff and look at it. Unfortunately, during the closing ceremonies, we didn't win any awards. That's just because, as you guys will see when I demo the project, it wasn't very fine-tuned. The initial idea and concept were there, but a lot of things we wanted to add, we couldn't execute on. And you know, looking back, all of us probably would have changed our approach to what we decided to make if we were really going for awards. But it was a great learning experience, had a great time. And at the end of the day, I mean, you know, as much as some of the prizes were pretty meaningful, that's not why we went. We went to have a good time, create an app, and that's exactly what we did. So during the closing ceremonies, they announced, you know, the winners. That's where people got to, got to go up and present what they made and get the prizes from the sponsors. Then after that, we took our bus back from Montreal, back home, and that was the event. So that was kind of the story of my hackathon event. Really great time. And again, I would recommend to any of you, if you'd like to go to those, you know, do it. Just go, even if you don't have a team, go solo. There was a ton of people that went solo. There was actually someone who won, I think like fifth place um, in the entire event of like 700 people alone, which was really impressive and it was good for her. So anyways, that was my story. Now I'm gonna get into a demo and show you guys exactly what we built. All right, so I'm on my computer here and I'm gonna be showing you guys the website that we actually built. Now, unfortunately, there's quite a few errors with this website now because our API token that was used to access the API for all the music 
was actually invalidated today. So that means a lot of the kind of online and you know cooler features of this website don't work anymore. So I've had to modify it to work offline, but I still will be able to show you most of the functionality. So this is our website. It is called Vibe. Now you can see this is running a local host where we haven't deployed this. This is meant to run local host. It's not meant to run on an actual proper you know web server. And this is run using Flask. Now I'm just going to show you guys some of the features of the website and then I'll talk about the more technical details. So obviously on the sidebar here, you can choose your vibe. So happy, sad, energetic, or calm. And that was kind of the selling point of our website was just really simple, really easy. We don't want all these custom features, just simplistic. You pick a vibe and it shows you some songs that are in that vibe. Now I've manually added these songs to this playlist, but the idea is you can search for songs at the top here. This isn't currently working as I'll show you because we don't have access to the API anymore. And then you can decide to add those songs to whatever playlist you want. And you can kind of organize your songs into four different vibes. So what we have here is, you know, the duration, the artist and the song. And if we want to go ahead and play some music, we can press play. Now the idea here again would be that you would cue songs. And then, you know, you'd be able to view your queue and play all the songs. Again, I can't do that for you guys because the API is not working. So we can't actually do that. Now, I'll show you a little bit about how this communication actually happens from the websites. So the API we're using actually runs on your computer. It runs a music server locally. So the way that you need to play music is by sending specific commands to this music server in the form of, you know, get requests or post request. So in this case, you can see all of the different commands running on my web server, which is on the right side here, which runs the website. And then you can see some commands on the left side, which runs the music server. So what we did was we had this website here send commands to the music server to play the sound. So this is really just an interface for the music playing in the background of your computer. And that's why, again, we can't make this work, you know, over the web on HTTP because that wouldn't work. You need to have the music server running on your computer as well. So, I mean, I'll just play a few songs for you guys to prove that this is indeed working. So I'm just going to fast forward and we see we'll play the next song in our playlist. Let's fast forward again and we get another song. Now, unfortunately, I can't play too much of the song. Otherwise, YouTube is probably going to take down this video for copyright. Uh, but you get the point, right? So this is the web server here. We can decide which songs to play. And yeah, that's pretty much what we were able to accomplish on this website. So I'll walk you a little bit through the code here and just give you an idea of how much actually went into the site and why, you know, maybe it's not as amazing as you guys would have pictured in 24 hours. Keep in mind that this was created with pretty well, absolutely no breaks. So at the beginning, the code was all nice and beautiful. And then by the time we got to, you know, probably 12 hours, we stopped really caring and just coded and tried to get it done as fast as possible. So you'll notice that the entire front end, and I'm kind of looking at it right here with the index is built with pretty well all custom HTML and CSS. So almost everything we did here was custom. We used a little bit of bootstrap, but really only for those tables that you saw in the main page. Uh, bootstrap was not a main part of this website. And then we wrote all custom jQuery and JavaScript to handle some of the things like changing the vibe in the gradient based on the one that you could choose. So notice this is the gradient for energetic. If we go to happy, we get a different gradient that gives us some different colors. So that was kind of a cool feature of our website as well. One of our other teammates managed to get those gradients working, which was awesome. And now I'm in kind of the main back end, which is what I was responsible for, for most of the event. So I handled kind of setting up most of this flask backend, although those guys did do some of it as well, the other teammates. And then I pretty much wrote everything in this models um, folder here, which handles all of the connection to the website or sorry, that's the website to the music server that I showed you guys are running. So we have a database, we actually store all of the songs that people select and add to their playlist in a MySQL database that's local on the computer. Then we had this player module and you can see kind of some of the things that I was sending here. So all of my different authorization, you know, you guys can copy this token if you want. It's not working anymore. Um, we have playlist, which just handles, you know, a playlist object song, pretty basic, and then song library, which actually searches through all of the songs from the API. But again, this isn't working because we don't have access. Then we had a few other things that we had to do. So we had a setup script just to remove some old songs and to update the playlist manually so that this would work locally. And then a start music and start website just as some shortcuts to actually get the music server and website running. So that was pretty much what we did in at the hackathon in 24 hours. The people that we showed this to were pretty impressed uh, just because they did understand how difficult it actually was to work with that API. So I'm happy with it. It was a cool event and definitely a great learning experience, especially when it comes to front end development, as I had not very much experience with that before the event. So anyways, that has been it for this video. If you guys enjoyed, make sure you leave a like, 
subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one.